What is a matrix? Here's the definition. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. So for example, the numbers 3, 1, 2, 6, 7, 0, arranged in a rectangle, forms a matrix. And typically, we put these square brackets around a matrix, where it's also common to see round brackets or parentheses around the matrix. This matrix has two rows and three columns, and therefore we call it a two by three matrix. Let's take a look at another example. This matrix has four rows and two columns, and therefore it's a four by two matrix. And notice that I've used a negative number a decimal, a fraction, an irrational number, and even a variable. And these are all okay to use in a matrix. And it's even okay to use complex numbers, which are common in more advanced treatments of linear algebra. So here's an example of something that's not a matrix. Let's start filling it in. One, two, four. And then on the second row, we skip a number. In the third row, we also skip one. Well, that's not a rectangular array of numbers. There's some missing. It's triangular, not rectangular, and therefore not a matrix. In general, if a matrix has m rows and n columns, we say this matrix has size m by n. We also use the words dimensions to describe the size. So try this. Create matrices of the following sizes. Say a 3 by 3, a 5 by 1, a 1 by 1, and a 1 by 4. Put the video on pause, and after you unpause, we'll check some answers together. So here are the solutions for 3 by 3. Of course, my examples aren't going to be exactly like yours, but they should be the same size. So here's a 3 by 3 matrix, 3 rows and 3 columns. Here's a 5 by 1. That's got one column. So here's a matrix which is one column and 5 rows. And we call that a column matrix. A matrix with a single column is a column matrix. Here's a one by one. Well, that just simply has one row and one column. So it's just a single number surrounded by brackets. And a one by four, that's one row, four columns. So a single row. And that's called a row matrix. The individual numbers that make up a matrix are called the entries of the matrix. So for example, this 4 by 3 matrix, this is an entry in the second row, first column. And so we call it the 2, 1 entry of the matrix. This is an entry in the third row, second column. So that's the 3, 2 entry of the matrix. In general, the number in the ith row and jth column of matrix is called the i, j entry of the matrix. So try this on your own. Complete the following table of entries for the following matrix, say in the position 1, 1, in the 2, 3 position, in the 4, 4 position, in the 5, 1 position, and the 6, 5 position. Put the video on pause, and we'll check answers after you unpause. So here's the matrix in our positions. So the 1, 1 position, first row, first column, that's just negative 8.1. 3, 2, 3 position, that's second row, third column, that's just the number pi. Fourth row, fourth column, 4, 4 position. That's just 0. Fifth row, first column, 
five one position is just the number five sevenths in six row fifth column there is no six row and so this doesn't exist that was a trick question the leftmost non-zero entry in each row is called the leading entry of the row so for example let's take a look at the leading entries here leading entry of the first row is just this eight is the first it's the leftmost non-zero entry the second row it's just the three there third row is the one fourth row there is no non-zero entry so there is no leading entry and the fifth row simply that three there can all the entries of a matrix be zero and of course they can so here's an example so here's a two by three matrix with all zeros so that is what's called the two by three zero matrix and in general the n the m by n matrix with all zero entries is called the m by n zero matrix for obvious reasons and sometimes we leave off the size if it's clear from the context what the size of the matrix is so zero matrices play roughly the same role for matrices as the number zero does in the number system The entries of a matrix with row number equal to column number are called the diagonal entries of the matrix. And further, the collection of all the diagonal entries is called the main diagonal of a matrix. So for example, let's take a look at the following matrix. So this is a 3 by 4 matrix, and the 1, 1, and 2, 2, and 3, 3 entries are the diagonal entries. And so here's the main diagonal. I'm going to circle it. A matrix with the same number of rows and columns is called a square matrix. So for example, here's a two by two square matrix, two rows and two columns. And here's a four by four square matrix four rows and four columns. The n by n square matrix with ones down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else is called the n by n identity matrix and it's denoted by i sub n or simply just by i if the size is implied by the context. And so here's some examples of identity matrices. So here's the two by two identity. Again ones down the main diagonals, zero elsewhere. And here is the 4x4 four four identity. I find it easier, uh, you know, just writing this out row by row. An identity acts roughly like a 1 for matrices. So try this one on your own. Write down the I6, the 6x6 six six identity, and we'll check answers toward the end of the video. So why are matrices important? It's a big question, but here's my best attempt at an answer. Matrices encode the simplest possible relationships between input variables and output variables. In particular, these are called linear relationships because variables only appear to the first order. No squares, no cubes, and so on. To get an idea of what I mean by this, let's take a look at a few examples. So we're going to look at input and output relationships and the corresponding matrix. The first example has one input and one output. So this is y is equal to 65 times x. The input is x, the output is y. And to give this an interpretation, for example, x could uh, be the elapsed time in hours that you've been traveling, y, the, the distance you travel in that many hours, and, and the 65 represents how fast you're traveling in miles per hour. So what's the corresponding matrix? Well, in this case, it's just a one by one matrix, simply the matrix 65. Here's another example. So 
So this one has three inputs and one output. Here's the relationship. Y is equal to 0.6t plus 0.3h plus 0.1p. And here Y could represent the total percentage in a course that you earn. T, the average percent on tests. H, the average percent on homework. And P, the average participation grade. And what Y computes is your overall score if you get 60% on tests, 30% on homework, and 10% on participation. The corresponding matrix is just given by this row matrix. Here's another example of two inputs and two outputs. So what this is going to represent is the inputs will be the coordinates of a point before you do a 45 degrees counterclockwise rotation. The original coordinates of a point, we're going to rotate that point 45 degrees counterclockwise and get two new coordinates, x2 and y2. So those are the coordinates after the rotation. Let's uh, draw a picture here to make things clear. So here's the original point. We're going to rotate it 45 degrees counterclockwise. It's going to go up here, and here's the new point that we're going to label x2, y2. Believe it or not, there's a linear relationship between those inputs and outputs, and here is that linear relationship. And the corresponding matrix is just given by a 2x2 two two matrix, and it's this 2x2 two two matrix called a rotation matrix. It's very useful in, say, graphics to rotate an object by 45 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so what do we do with matrices? And the answer is pretty much everything that we do with numbers, we can do with matrices in terms of algebraic operations with some restrictions. So we're just going to touch on this. Let A and B be matrices. We can add them. We can scale a matrix, multiply by constant. We can multiply matrices together under certain conditions. We can add, uh, find the additive inverse of a matrix, or negative A, and the multiplicative inverse, A to the negative 1 power. And we can even solve equations with matrices under certain conditions. This is called matrix algebra, and we'll be going into depth later. And But you can't always do these operations. Unlike numbers, certain restrictions apply. New phenomena happen with matrix algebra that don't happen with number algebra. For example, a times b is not always equal to b times a. So the commutative property does not apply for matrix multiplication. So matrix algebra is richer and more complex than number algebra, and this leads to lots of applications of matrices. As promised, here's the answer to the 6 by 6 identity matrix. Just got 1s down the main diagonal, zeros elsewhere. And finally, let's do a real quick recap of what we covered in this video. We covered the definition of a matrix, the size of a matrix, what a column matrix is, row matrix, the entries of a matrix, the leading entry of each row, zero matrices, diagonal entries of a matrix, what the main diagonal is, square matrices, the identity matrices, linear relationships, and finally we just touched on matrix algebra.